One of the best features of Ableton Live's Arrange Review is the ability to use Live's built-in loop brace to set a loop point of your song to continually loop until you're ready to move on. This is how you do that. So in Arrange Review, I'm going to select just a particular section of my song here. I'm going to do Command L to, one, set the start and end point of my loop brace, as well as enable the loop. So now I could press space bar, and uh, this particular section of my song, this vamp section, is going to continue to loop over and over until I decide to stop it. Now, in order to stop the loop, I'm going to click this uh, loop uh, switch up here to disable it, and then that moves on to the next part of my song. Now, this is a great feature, um, but it's not a great feature to use live on stage. And the reason is, one of the next questions you're going to have once you see this is, well, this is amazing. How can I have multiple loop points? How can I have multiple loop braces? So throughout my song, let's say we've got vamp set. How can I make it to where a little later on then I have chorus set? Uh, so I could do the same thing with the chorus. So maybe your mind thinks a little like mine and you're starting to go, oh, so he's selecting a thing. He's doing command L. Maybe I could use keyboard mice or some sort of advanced automation to move my loop brace and to enable it. Well, in this video, I want to explain why I don't use Live's loop brace live on stage. I use it in the studio quite often, but not on stage. And how to work around the limitation of only having one uh, particular section of a song we can loop at a time using Live's built-in loop. So uh, I have tons of freedom and flexibility on stage when I use tracks and arrangement view, uh, but it's because of uh, two really cool features. So number one, let's talk about this. So Here's my setup, set up, uh, my Ableton session. Again, I've got my loop set up. Why do I not use Live's built-in loop on stage? Well, there's no way to move that loop brace and enable it without some manual interaction, right? So I have to actually go in and take and shift this over and then enable it. And you could see it's kind of, it's not like locking into grid exactly the way I want to. So I'd have to do some work to do this, to zoom in to get that locked in exactly where I need, resize it, and then enable my uh, loop uh, switch on and off. Uh, that's just not a great workflow live on stage. I guess in theory, you could have it loop a start of a, a section or a song and then move later in the song and loop that if you wanted to. Um, but I just have no interest in being that dependent on my brain working and remembering to do something in order for it to work in live. Uh, so again, I mentioned I use Live's loop race in the studio quite often to punch in and out, to uh, set uh, uh, loop points to to play something and, and record it until I get it just right to comp particular parts, but I don't use it live on stage and, and mainly because of its inability to have multiple versions uh, to move the loop brace around. Uh, and, and again, it just requires a lot of interaction on my part. So here's how I do it. So let's take a look at this file. I'm going to turn live's loop off so I don't accidentally trigger that. And let's take a look at this file. So particular verse four. So see right here where it says verse four. And then this is verse three. These are called locators. So what I've done in, in this Ableton session is I've right clicked here and I've said add locator and I've given that a name. So I've just type in song section name like this. Okay. And as long as I have a locator, let's go back to this vamp part here. As long as I have a locator, I could do some really cool stuff with this. So if I let this play, let's uh, double click here to play this. Okay. I'm going to click this vamp part again, and you'll notice as long as I do this before I get into my next song section, as long as I click any time in this last measure before I get to verse three, that part's going to loop over and over. Now, obviously you're only hearing the click track, but that's so that YouTube doesn't try to demonetize the video because I'm using copyrighted material. So I've got the click just solo, so you can't hear the rest of the content, but just trust me. The rest of the content is there. So this is a really nice feature. I could click on locators, double click to start on a specific song. Again, in and, and the end of that last measure, before I go to the next section, I can trigger that. And the reason I'm waiting for the last measure here is because of global quantization that's set to one bar up here, which means if I click on a locator while live is played, it's gonna wait till the next downbeat of one to jump to that song section, okay? So this is a great way to loop but it's not still not a great way to loop on stage because again, it's taken a lot of manual interaction for me to get that just right. So here's what I do instead. Uh, I either do one of two things. I use a MIDI controller like this. This is the Oak board, um, uh, Oak tone mini, which is really, really great, uh, that I enjoy. And this is kind of my main MIDI controller primarily because it's really simple. A lot of really simple control. If I'm playing uh, guitar, I might use a MIDI foot controller, but if I don't have a foot controller or a MIDI controller available to me, this is what I would do. So I do command K and uh, control K if you're on a PC and this takes me into key assign mode. What I want to do is go to this arrow right here. So right below the set button, 
uh, I see this arrow here. I'm going to click on that and type R. Okay. If you were going to do this with a MIDI controller, you would do command M. You see everything turns blue and then whatever is blue uh, can be mapped to a MIDI controller. So in this case, if I was using a MIDI controller, I would click that repeat button. I would take my MIDI controller and in this particular case, I would map it to previous um, so that that would repeat. That's essentially going to function as my repeat. Okay. So I've got command K set up. So I could do a similar thing here. Let's uh, double click on our vamp. Okay, and then I'm in the last measure of this song section. I'm going to press R, right? And that's going to just repeat my song section, okay? And as many times as I press R, as long as I continue to press R, that's going to continue to loop, okay? So let's do it one more time. Let's loop that section. So I'll wait to the last section here, last measure, rather, okay? And we'll press R and then this time we won't press R and it's just going to play throughout my song. So the first way for me to do live looping on stage is to take advantage of live's previous locator button. And again, we can access that here and we can key assign it. We can MIDI assign it. We could manually click it. If I was in verse three and I wanted to jump back to verse three, I could click that with my mouse if I want to. And again, as a reminder, that's going to follow global quantization. Leave this set to one bar. Don't change it to eight bars. Don't change it to anything two bars. Uh, just leave it set to one bar and just know that anytime in the last measure of the song section you're on, um, you're going to click that to, to loop that section. Okay. Uh, this is great, but it still requires some interaction from me. I like the loop race uh, approach because when I get there, it's just going to keep looping until I disable it. Uh, could we do a similar thing in Ableton Live? Well, we can. In order to do that, we're going to use something that I call the most important hack in Ableton Live, and it's using a virtual MIDI driver. If you're on a Mac, we're going to use what's called the IAC driver. If you're on a PC, then you're going to uh, download a virtual MIDI driver like um, uh, Loop BE1, which is a great solution. There's some other solutions as well, too. I'm going to link to tutorial videos below this video where I show you how to set up the IAC driver. For the sake of now, I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just going to make this happen. But I have tutorial videos showing you how to set up the IEC driver on Mac, as well as how to set up a virtual MIDI uh, bus on PC. So let's talk about doing this on Mac. I've already set up the IAC driver, which is what I'm going to use on my Mac. I'm going to add a MIDI track here. So I did Command Shift T to create my MIDI track. I'm going to do Command R, and we're going to call this loop, okay? Loop slash repeat. Uh, use two terms that hopefully one of them resonates with you and makes sense. Um, so now I'm going to set the output of this to be the IAC driver. The best way to think of the IAC driver is it's a virtual MIDI bus. It's a virtual MIDI cable that comes out of Ableton Live, and then I've configured it properly to come back into Ableton Live. Again, if you're going, but Will, you never showed me how to configure it, check the link in the description of this video, show you how to do that in extreme, extreme detail. Okay, so uh, we've got our loop slash repeat channel set up. Um, let's walk through, uh, how, how to do this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead because I already see the issue here because I have this click soloed for the sake of, uh, not playing my stems. I'm going to go ahead and also solo my loop and repeat. Don't miss the context here and say, Will is saying we can only loop and repeat when our click is soloed. I'm just doing that for the sake of YouTube. Okay. Um, so I'm going to solo the loop repeat track, and then I'm going to create a, uh, what I call a repeat clip. So I'm going to highlight a measure of space here. I'm going to do command shift M and that's going to create my loop. And then I'm going to pick any single MIDI note. It, um, you could use this with a MIDI controller as well too, to set this up. I just, for now, I'm going to just pick any note. And if I haven't done any assignments yet, then it doesn't matter what note I pick. So when I'm just doing a default demo, starting from scratch, I always pick the bottom most note here, C minus two. I'm going to double click to create that. And then just personal preference, I drag this to be the entire length of the clip so that when I look at it visually, I see that my note fills the clip. That's just like a little small little reassurance to me uh, and my, my stupid little monkey brain of, okay, uh, th there is a note here uh, that is going to fill this entire clip. So that looks good to me. So now what I need to do is map this MIDI clip to this uh, previous locator. Now, how in the world would I map a MIDI clip to a previous locator? Well, earlier, you remember me telling you about this guy, this Oakboard Mini, and I said, hey, I'm gonna map the previous to that. Well, how did I say to do that? Uh, what was our keyboard shortcut? Command M. If you're on a PC, Control M. And when I do that, that makes anything here MIDI mappable. So in order to map this, here's all I'm gonna do. I've already set my IEC driver up, okay? And I'm gonna just click a little before this, and it's gonna play. And then I'm going to click my previous locator button right there. And as soon as the playhead crosses over that clip, 
um, then you could see what happens. It MIDI maps that MIDI clip to that particular command, okay? So if we go back in here, Command M, it's MIDI mapped to there. I could show you in Live's um, uh, MIDI mapping browser here, channel one, note C minus two. Remember how we picked note C minus two? It's mapped to a locator. Um, and the path is locator is the name of the function is previous locator, okay? So let's get out of MIDI map mode, Command M. I'm gonna rename this MIDI clip now and let's close Live's browser here. I'm gonna re remap uh, or rename this MIDI clip here and let's call this uh, repeat, okay? And then let's set this right here. And actually, uh, for the sake of this, um, let's put it like just right towards the end of our song section, okay? So I have my loop brace turned off. Um, I still have the ability to click R and jump back to previous locators. You can see I'm kind of navigating my song that way. But I'm going to double click on the vamp section here, okay? And um, let's see what happens. So I'll let that play for a second. Okay, so you see just naturally by default, when we hit that repeat clip, it's going to uh, go back to the previous song section. Now you're probably asking, okay, well, this is great. And, and it requires no interaction for me, right? So hands off, it's just gonna play, it's gonna hit the repeat clip, last measure of that section and it's going to loop. Um, I prefer this because if I were to forget for some reason, um, it's not going to, like, I don't have to, I don't have to interact to say repeat in order for that section to repeat. I'm kind of pre-programming, I, I call it pre-programming a looping song section, right? Um, now, how do I get out of that loop though? This is super important. Now, because of the nature of how I have this set up, I'm gonna unsolo these and let's just disable all these tracks really quick. That's that's how um, I'm gonna go through this, okay? So we'll leave our click going and let's leave our loop repeat going just so you can hear that. Um, how do I get out of this? Here's what I'm gonna do. Now, previously, we assigned R on our keyboard to what? We assigned it to this repeat button up here. Um, this MIDI clip is assigned to that repeat button here. Now what I'm gonna do is do Command K. I'm gonna delete my mapping where I said R to be repeat. I'm now gonna make it the on off for this track here. I'm gonna set that to R, okay? So now we get out of Command K. Let's press play on our vamp. Let's just listen. Again, it's gonna repeat. Uh, it's gonna hit there and then repeat. Now let's get out of it. I'm gonna press R. What did R do? R disabled this track and it's gonna play through, which is great. So that's the way that I personally handle pre-programming a looping song section. And what's great about this, I guess you started watching this video. One of the reasons you maybe started watching this was because you wanted multiple loop races. So how do I do this multiple times? Uh, let's just take this clip here. I'm going to click on it and I'm holding uh, all option to duplicate it. I'm going to put it at the end of this first four and watch what happens. We'll get to the end of this first four. Let's enable it. We enable that track and it's going to repeat verse four. And it's gonna repeat as many times, I'll jump us ahead. It's gonna repeat as many times as we keep that track enabled, right? So as long as this track is enabled here, it's gonna to continue to loop. Let's do it one more time. Okay, and this time I don't want it to loop, so I press R at any point in that song section. It's gonna disable the loop. And this time when we jump ahead, it's gonna jump right into the core. So this is how I personally manage pre-programming looping song sections. Uh, this is how I set up what I call a repeat track so that I can repeat any song section really easily in Ableton Live. Again, you can do this on a Mac or PC. It doesn't cost a single thing. On Mac, uh, you just use the IEC driver. Again, check the link in the description of this video for, I think, a four or five part series where I show you how to do a bunch of really cool things with the IEC driver. And then again, if you're on a PC, you could use a free utility called Loop Beat U1, which I show you how to set that up uh, on your PC. Now, from there, the, the possibilities are endless. We could set up what I call uh, a, a switch track or a flip track to actually, once we get past that section and I disable it to have it turn that track back on, um, we could automate lots and lots of really, really cool things. Um, but in order to learn how to do that, you have to become a From Studio to Stage student. And you can click the link in the description of this video uh, to learn uh, how you can subscribe, what you get when you subscribe. But before you get to that point, you've got to learn how to format all your track content. Uh, you've got to learn to use tracks on, a, uh, on stage in a way that's efficient, flexible, and stable. And to start that, you need a tracks template to format all your content. And I have a free tracks template that I would love to give away to you completely for free. All you have to do is head to fromstudiotostage.com slash template uh, to grab that template for free. 
you could start formatting all your songs. And then once you feel like you're, you're getting some progress going, or if you want a little extra help, then I would highly encourage you to become a From Studio to Stage student. Again, check the link in the description of this uh, video to figure out how to do that. And you can join an incredibly supportive community of folks that are on the same path as you, trying to figure out how to use tracks on stage um, and, and are going to encourage you along the way. Uh, it, it's so, so much more. I'm not going to try to sell the subscription in this video, but if you want to go a little further, become a From Studio to Stage student, but make sure you download that template for free. Uh, it's a great, incredible resource for you. Now, I post new content every single day, 10 a.m. Central here on the YouTube channel, completely for free. So if you're interested in learning how to run tracks on stage like a pro in Ableton Live, you need to click the subscribe button on this channel and click the uh, bell icon so you're notified whenever we post new content. Again, I post new content every single day. And what I love about that notification button is you'll get a little notification pop up on your phone. If you've got the YouTube app, you'll see the title of the video and you'll go, yeah, that doesn't interest me. Or, hey, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I love when that happens. And you can click through the video, watch it, and if not, ignore it, and you can watch the next one. But thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Central, and 10 a.m. Central the day after that. Uh, take care, everybody. Bye.